can't begin to artificially create. There's nothing that's as exciting to me as the real texture of it, the real people on the street. Audiences sense the kind of truth-telling style of the environment that the action is happening in. One of my ambitions with a picture like this to really go exploring into some of these areas. Place. It's got to be, we're now, this group is going to go off. We have to tell Chris, he's got to assign some people with you. And that's the only way it goes. We don't just wander around. One of the exciting things about working with Michael, he chooses real locations all the time. You're dealing with an environment that can often surprise you. Whether it's the light, whether it's a dramatic moment with the sky or some interior or some sort of background action that would not have happened in a controlled backlot situation. The famous dancer, right? <laughs> Michael Mann, that's his thing. Finding places that, you know, that aren't even on the map. A low angle, that's pretty good. I don't want to get bummed by our crew. Michael's all about making the experience and the environment, you know, as real as he possibly can, you know? He's all about why fake it when you can do it for real. What I want you to do is stay here and shoot the ship because it's got the kind of saturated chroma right now in this light that we're looking to get. Just some variations in exposure. Because what we're looking for is maximum chromatic saturation. It's incredibly stimulating. It's incredibly exciting. Tri-border area where Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina meet. It's such a unique part of the world. Middle East, Lebanese and Syrians, a lot of ethnic Chinese. The president of the country speaks Guarani, which is the indigenous language. And everybody speaks two and three languages. And so it's a, it's a really up to the moment kind of place with this crazy kind of laissez-faire commerce that's going on. Selling anything, anything and everything. The Cidad del Este exists basically on the gray market world and uh, counterfeiting uh, of goods. If you want something cheap, you can attain the latest movie that has just been released in the United States, the newest watch that Rolex has put in the market, and anything else you want. I bought Collateral for $2. <laughs> it was uh, a DVD. Everything's packed in styrofoam, uh, whether it's a new camera, a television, a stereo, a uh, computer. And at night, like at six o'clock, seven o'clock, it's like everything's thrown out the window. And you get this pile along the street of styrofoam, at least six feet tall. Jose. Jose, what is it? In general, in locations, what you want to do is get the local people out. You want to put in your own extras and you want to shoot. What Michael wants to do is actually shoot our person on a motorcycle going through live traffic. Hey, that is tough on the filmmaking process because you don't have the control, you don't have the resources when you're out on a location. All right, guys, here we go. You've got to be pretty determined to get a crew to these places. Clearly, Michael is determined to do that. I mean, he finds places where I'm just like, Jesus, where the fuck did you find this place, you know? Because it's not in any book you could, you can't Google, you know, 
some of the neighborhoods we've been in. We shot a lot of stuff in the Dominican Republic, and in some areas that took a lot of social engineering to be able to bring a film company in and shoot responsibly and shoot safely. There are people who are struggling to get by every day. And so when you go into an area like that, you have to move in with the people. You have to understand their structures. So if one group controls a certain area, you have to be working with that group. And you don't just mindlessly kind of import people from another neighborhood into this neighborhood. How are you doing? Oh, how you doing, Michael? I had an idea. I saw a guy standing here. Just have a foot up like this. Yeah. So that's what you're doing. They're walking the street. You'll be, you'll be kind of on a sidewalk. Okay. okay. Now, I need to shoot right now. You better fucking nail this. Go. Ready? Man. Action. Let's go. Why do I get the feeling everybody knows we're here 15 blocks out? Because everybody knows we're here 15 blocks out. You're in the environment and you react accordingly and you're very aware and you're very conscious of everything that's happening around you, in front of you, behind you, left, right, you know? It's kind of a globalized city. There's a huge Haitian population, and then there's just a lot of people with a lot of money from Brazil, from Venezuela, from Colombia. I met a cab driver, a Haitian cab driver, uh, about three weeks ago, who uh, sort of introduced me to the whole world of Little Haiti. We here, we in the hood, all access granted in the hood. We're gonna take y'all through step by step, you know? This is a mummy with a restaurant in it. This is the exclusive. So this is like a five-star restaurant. From the food, the music, the cultural stuff, the uh, religious aspects of it. That's the generation about the Haitians. So whatever voodoo you have to make, you have to call them first. Miami has so evolved. It's much more muscular. It seems to have elevated itself up into the most sensual part of Miami, which is up into the air. The storm systems, the clouds, the dramatic weather. You're kind of at one with nature in a very almost tactile way. It's a place where there are probably about 25 condominiums being built at any one time and presented in the sort of these glass tower sort of imagery with you know water views and blue sky and reach up high enough you'll eventually see the water but um, you end up so far from the ground that you just lose touch he obviously goes to these sort of you know really swank fantastic places and the girls are still beautiful and the cars are still fast but he doesn't pull any punches when it comes to the underbelly of miami Colin. has that allure, very, very attractive and very engaging and very alluring and very sensual and also very dangerous and things that you can't see are right around the corner. Thank you so much. And for our next movie, we're going to go to even more exotic places. This is movie is rap. Miami Vice is rap. <laughs>
off someplace, he's got to be, well, now this group is going to go off. We have to tell Chris, he's got to assign some people with you. And that's the only way it goes. We don't just wander around. One of the exciting things about working with Michael, he chooses real locations all the time. You're dealing with an environment that can often surprise you, whether it's boring into some of these areas. The light, whether it's a dramatic moment with the sky or some interior or some sort of background action that would not have happened in a controlled backlot situation. The famous dancer, right? <laughs> Michael Mann, that's his thing. Finding places that, you know, that aren't even on the map. A low angle, that's pretty good. Things you can't begin to artificially create. There's nothing that's as exciting to me as the real texture of it, the real people on the street. Audiences sense the kind of truth-telling style of the environment that the action is happening in. One of my ambitions with a picture like this is to really go explore. I don't want to get bummed by our crew. Michael's all about making the experience and the environment, you know, as real as he possibly can, you know? It's all about why fake it when you can do it for real. What I want you to do is stay here and shoot the ship because it's got the kind of saturated chroma right now in this light that we're looking to get. Do some variations in exposure. Because what we're looking for is maximum chromatic saturation. 